Howdy folks! Thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and by the way, I'm from Arizona, where uh, neither this hat nor the term howdy folks is actually considered all that unusual. Anyway, I'm at Rock Island today wearing this very fine western hat because we are taking a look at a pair of very fine Colt western revolvers. These are Colt model of 1877 revolvers. We have a Lightning here and a Thunderer there. This was Colt's very first double action revolver design, and well, <laughs> it, it's not that Colt invented the double action revolver, far from it. In fact, uh, this was so much in the public domain by 1877 that Colt didn't get any patents on the trigger mechanism for these guns. In fact, uh, Sam Colt himself was kind of dismissive of the whole concept of double action in revolvers. He thought it made the firing, the, the lock work, fragile and prone to damage, and he thought it was wasteful of ammunition, that you were better off having to individually cock each round and take good aim and make a, a careful good shot. And if you gave someone access to a double action trigger, they would just you know, wail off all six shots, waste all their ammo, and, and then be in trouble. This is frankly very similar to the arguments against repeating rifles. But, well, and that's why Colt never made a double action revolver during Sam Colt's lifetime. But Sam Colt passed away in 1862, and the company would decide to come out with a double action revolver about 15 years later. Now what really spurred this decision, because Colt was doing really quite well with its single action armies, but in 1873, Webley revolvers started showing up in the United States, being imported in from England. And Webley was making an interesting pattern of gun. It was a, a small, pocket-sized, but large bore. Uh, well, they made a variety of them, but they went all the way up to 45 caliber. Uh, double action, like a bulldog revolver. And these became really quite popular guns in the American West. They were affordable, but they were still high quality, and they were concealable and fast to use. And that is probably the single biggest reason why Colt decided to introduce these guns. They wanted something to compete against those Webley imports. So uh, in 1876, a guy named William Mason, who was a longtime employee of the Colt company and a really quite talented and skilled engineer, he designed the, uh, the lock work for this gun, which was released the very next year in 1877, and would become a reasonably popular gun. This wasn't Colt's best selling model, but it was far from their worst selling model as well. well let's go ahead and take a closer look at these two, and I'll show you some of their details. There were actually three patterns of the Model 1877, of which I have two to show you today. Uh, this guy on the right is a Thunderer, and that is in 41 caliber. It would fire 41 long Colt or 41 short Colt. The one on the left here, the nice fancy engraved model, that is a Lightning, which is the 38 caliber model. Again, it would fire either 38 short Colt or 38 long Colt ammunition. The third pattern was, again, the exact same frame size, but it was a 32 caliber gun that was given the name Rainmaker. Uh, and those are extremely rare, with only something like 300 of them being made, compared to tens of thousands of both of these patterns. You can see a lot of the obvious styling carryovers from the 1873 single action army revolver. The barrel, the ejector, the upper part of the frame, the cylinder, the hammer, all of these elements are very, very similar. Uh, the bird's head grip is a bit distinctive to the 1877s. These were intended to be more of a pocket style gun. Colt would introduce a 45 caliber double action in 1878, just the very next year, but it used a substantially different frame and different lock work. It was not, not just a scaled up version of this. So we'll cover the 1878s in a separate video later on. As with, uh, a, as with basically all of Colt's production, you could get a wide variety of features and finishes. Barrel lengths were offered from as short as one and a half inches, in fact without an ejector rod, all the way up to 10 inches with an ejector rod. Uh, typical was something like this, uh, a four and a half inch barrel. These were all six shot revolvers. If we put the two side by side here, you can see that the barrel wall on the left, the 41, uh, is a bit thinner. The external diameter of the barrel is identical for both guns. And you can see down here on the cylinders that the cylinder walls are a bit thinner on the 41s. Uh, this is in fact safe, 
So maybe you think they, they designed this for 41 and then they just drilled smaller chambers for the 38 caliber version. You could, of course, get these very finely engraved with pearl handles like this one has. These were not double action only revolvers, they were what you would say, what you would call DASA. So uh, you can cock the hammer manually and then fire. You can also just pull the trigger and fire like so. I don't want to snap this one because this is a very nice, uh, rather expensive example. There is really no good way to distinguish between the lightning and the thunderer uh, you know, from, a, from a picture. Uh, if you can't see the, the barrel or the chambers, uh, the only thing you have to go on is the marking on the barrel. So you can see this one is marked Colt DA38, double action 38. And our Thunderer here is marked DA41. This is the sort of standard hard rubber grip uh, that you would normally get if you didn't pony up the extra money for something fancy like Pearl. And of course we have Colt's uh, company information marked up on top of the barrel there. These guns were far from Colt's best-selling product, but they're also far from its worst-selling product either. They did develop a reputation for being fragile and difficult to repair, and today in particular it's not uncommon, in fact it is uncommon, to find lightnings and thunderers, original lightnings and thunders that are in really good mechanical shape. Uh, and they are tricky guns for gunsmiths to work on, so something to keep in mind if you're looking for one yourself. Uh, that said, by, they, they were in production until 1909 or 1910, and they produced uh, uh, 166,849 of them in total. So 35 years, 167,000 guns, that's not a bad production run. Um, but they would of course be eclipsed by newer and better models. So uh, there were a bunch of Old West folks uh, who enjoyed the uh, the Lightning and Thunder are probably the most notable of them, with the best actual proven connection to these guns was Doc Holliday, who particularly enjoyed the 1877 pattern. There are rumors about people like Billy the Kid also using them, but a lot of that's kind of uh, anecdotal and apocryphal. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today. I am going to go back to regular videos without very fine hats, but thanks for watching.